the Ranger. I pulled out of the Jimmy. This radio is about, I'd say about 15 years old. It's a first generation 2950. Um, it's kind of a fragile radio, and that's why I'm pulling it out of the the, the Blazer, the Jimmy. It's uh, been given some problems, mostly with the power connection on the back. These radios had, they just didn't like to be jiggled around a whole lot. And of course, the Jimmy's not the smoothest riding vehicle in the world. So I'm going to put uh, a little cheapy, weaky, squeaky uh, 40 channel Midland in. Uh, we picked it up over at Walmart for about 33 bucks, um, but uh, it'll be just a little AM radio. The only thing it's used for really is uh, truck to truck, so uh, I think it'll work pretty well for what I want. So anyway, I'm going to start uh, setting up power cables. I'm going to mount it to this, take this guy off and and set it up so then I can just drop it into the Jimmy and and it'll be ready to go. So here we are. There's the wires coming from the radio. Uh, this one didn't have a cigarette lighter plug on it, which is something I do use. So I'm going to put one on it. So I've just used the crimpers, strip off just a little bit, Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Not that much right there, not that much right there. I'll do the same to this. connectors. Here we go. So this is 22 and 24 gauge wire. So if you look on the cutters it'll tell you right here either a blue one or a red one. The way you can tell your wire is if you look down here at the strippers just work your way down until it strips the wire and then that's the, the number of wire you have. One way to do it. Normally I like to put heat shrink over these but um, right now my heat guns out of commission. So, I'm just going to crimp them together. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Of course, this is black to black, red to red. And if you were to put heat shrink over this, it would help hold it even better. But it looks like I've got a nice good, well, I thought I had a nice good connection. Guess we'll have to fix that in editing. On to the next part. That's going to be putting the uh, mounting bracket on the radio. Uh, putting the mounting bracket onto the old radio. We're taking the 
on to the next step. Putting the uh, mounting bracket on this radio and taking that mounting bracket and putting it on, on the radio mount I built. in, but it has a problem. A freaking defect. Brand new radio. Well, here it is. It's in. Have a problem. It's defective. Brand new radio and uh, has next to no audio. If I... If I press on the volume knob, it comes up and starts kind of working. So, like I said, it's a brand new radio. Uh, don't know how well you can see that in the dark, but uh, I'm a little disappointed. So I guess it's going to be taken, package it all up, and send it back. Get another one. On the computer. So after um, two different new radios, that Midland was a piece of junk. Then I tried a Uniden. Uh, I think it was a Pro 530. That was junk. And then I ended up with this uh, Cobra. 25 LTD Classic. Eh, it's just a basic little AM radio. But uh, it'll work for going back and forth between uh, the trucks. Not on the trail. See, it's got a mic gain, an RF gain, of course, a squelch, a volume control, channel 9. Right down. Noise blanker. PA. Typical. Just basic gray little radio. And it'll work fine for what I do. Of course, it's Chinese junk too, that's where it's made. <laughs> 